Hello, Spy fans. Welcome to the commentary desk. My name is Bart, and uh, joining you once again is Tom, of course, over to uh, my left, your right. And thank you all very much for joining us here as we move over to North America for our second and final set here of this Friday. But still uh, eight more sets to go this weekend besides this one, so quite a bit of smite coming your way. Tons, tons of smite. But right now, uh, we're going to start off in North America. We'll take a look at how everything is dialing up in the scene. Let's take a look at the standings. Wow, here they are. Look at that. Team Envy. Uh, formerly AFK, take another loss yesterday. Uh, improving TSM's record to 11-11, and 11, giving them a little bit of breathing room against Cloud9 as right. Eager still sits happily in second place there. And that's our top four. Our bottom four, though, Enemy Cog Denial Elevate. This game factoring in pretty importantly. If Denial's able to 2-0 Cog here, that puts them tied for the sixth and final spot into land and gives them an opportunity to move up uh, later on in this split as well. So this one going to factor in pretty heavily to that sixth place position. And of course, the top six teams from the ladder do go to land. Yeah, it's interesting. So if Denial takes two, obviously they tie like you just said. But if Cognitive takes two, the spread is very large. They wind up distancing, distancing themselves largely from the bottom end of the pack. Right. And at the bottom end of the pack, well, I mean... They pull four games ahead. Exactly. Mathematically, it's, they're not out of it, but it becomes a much tougher race to the yes. top. Uh, so a, a big game for Cog, and you can be sure that... Uh, DJ Pern and the boys looking looking for victories here, although um, Denial has ha been pretty streaky. I mean, the team's mm -hmm. definitely got the talent to be competitive, but oh, yeah. we've seen them struggle quite a bit this split. Yeah, Denial's uh, stutter-stepped a couple of times, but let's take a look at Cognitive and see where they sit. So they have a full roster this time around. Hey. Uh, it's going to be DJ Pernicus, Aurora the Best, a Kabam, and Meerkat rounding out the fact. Actually, uh, the mid lane, the best, he will be featured this Monday on Ask Me Anything Mondays. Oh, hey. Best thing we do in AMA. I, I assume lots of uh, trolley answers coming out of him. <laughs> I expect nothing less. I'm but looking, I'm looking the at the fourth person in position there. Good old Max Aurora Jackson. Look at him. What a goofball. Yeah, he just... What if a pizza had legs? <laughs> He's just the chunk, man. <laughs> there he is. You guys, uh, yeah, so uh, Aurora, just a hilarious guy. He joined us uh, on the commentary desk once or twice. Mm -hmm. Really has solid insight and because... And well, not because of that, but because he plays a fantastic support. They'll be taking on Denial, though, uh, featuring a new member. Yeah, also a fantastic support on that side as well. Let's take a look at their roster here as we uh, as we get closer and closer to game time. Moving our way over to Picks and Bands. It's Walrus, Sikandara, Mace of the Face, Shadow Q, and Bronx Bombers now. Now, Sikandara, if you're not familiar with that name, you will be familiar with homie Effie. Uh, they're the same person, name mm -hmm. swap in between. Uh, he briefly played for Cognitive Last Split under that name, but mm -hmm. just from just for a, a second here, uh, switching out Shing is Denial. So one of the bigger names in Smite are uh, going to be relegated to the bench in place of uh, Sikandara. Uh, was Shing bench or did Shing leave? I believe the story was benched, but bench uh, bench to leave. That is still out. Uh, Shing will be uh, will be having an interview with him later on this week. Yeah, I mean, because I, I know there's rumblings that Shing will be taking his uh, talents to the console. Yeah, everybody's talking about you know uh, Shing taking his talents to Turtle Beach, but we'll it's been a while since everyone's been talking about Shing. Yeah, right. I mean, like I Shing, so. Shing was once one of the more feared junglers, and oh yeah, it's been a steady decline since then. Mm -hmm. I'd say in terms of, oh, maybe maybe not so much Shing, but more you know the rise of Gars and Andinster. Yeah, um, Shing was kind of the premier North American jungler until those two youngins came onto the scene and <laughs> shook things up pretty substantially. Yeah, so uh, Shing taking a step back, like we said, we'll have all the details for you uh, on the website a little bit later Ooh. this week. But for the moment, this week it's going to come out today. Ah, uh, well, it's going to come out whenever Shing decides to send <laughs> me an email to back. Let us know what the deal is. <laughs> okay, fi fair enough. Well, we'll see how Denial does fare against this cognitive squad. Uh, definitely an advantage towards Cognitive. Let's move into the picks and bands here. I'd say this one, uh, betting odds are going to be definitely in favor of Cog here. Probably a 3-2. Sure. to two. It's pretty close, though, I'd say. Now, so uh, Cognitive versus Denial is very interesting here because Denial, they like to try new things. With Xing Qian on the, te on the table, I would not really bat an eye if Denial was the squad to go ahead and pick him up. And Cognitive Gaming has a very tried and true sort of situation. If you've ever heard of Dottis talk about this squad, you've heard him mention that it's pretty much they've got a healer and a warrior, mm -hmm. and that's how they win. And uh, Early so game focus squad as well in exactly. that regard. Uh, Aerie's going to be banned away by them. Isis removed by Cognitive Gaming. So a couple of uh, less than uh, than normal bands here. We don't often see these two gods banned out. Isis generally getting through, and Aerie's almost always getting through but not wanting to deal with uh, Aurora's Ares. Aurora known for those aggro supports. So exactly. don't be too surprised to see maybe uh, an Amir ban if they're going to target him. Uh, but it's probably Kepri. Like, I can't imagine them letting Kepri through in this situation just to give it up to one of the premier support players in North America and Aurora. But maybe they will. Maybe they don't want to face off against, you know, what have you, Sun Wukong or any other top-tier picks. Hell, factoring in there pretty heavily as well. So Denial not surprised away. to see the first pick Kepri here of COG. If, if they play it at all, it's probably going their way. Because you can be sure the Shadow Q has a, a, a strong Kepri. And they'll value the Giannis for best. 
Yeah, Giannis will be picked up for, for best, as you said. Now, Denial, like I mentioned before, so Xing Chen, we saw him earlier today played by Demi in the solo lane, so not strictly a support guardian. Uh, we'll see Sun Wukong picked up. I mean, I think... I think we give away Sun Wukong Kepri. Sun okay, they'll take Thor. the Thor. So the old... Uh, uh, these two seem to get paired fairly often. So Sikandara hasn't... It's worth noting that Sikandara, the jungler for this team, which is likely where Thor will wind up, uh, Sikandara hasn't, hasn't played at all this split. So it's eight mm -hmm. weeks plus that he hasn't played on the professional stage. You mentioned that he earlier played for Cognitive earlier in the year in separate splits. So uh, being able to pick up that Thor for the jungler that hasn't played on the big stage just yet, or, or as of late, probably not a bad swap. Osiris, early pick. That's uh, just to put him in the lane against Sun Wukong. It's the best laner against Sun Wukong in the uh, in the minds and hearts of the professional players. So sure. that's why I see him selected so early. He would get he would have certainly gotten banned in the second phase there. Thor, no surprise for denial, I'd say. Um, outside of the fact that Kepri is not selected for the first five picks, it's it's basically the baby's first jungler is Thor. I mean, that's what everyone kind of uh, learns on, and yep. and uh, that's that seems to be the favored jungler for carrying ranked and things like that for I mean, these pro level players. Yeah, he's just able to do so much, Bart. He starts off early as a strong gank, almost assassin type character as his archetype would tell you and then later on transitions into just more straight control. Still still able to get kills as you would want your jungler to do, but setup man as well. Sylvanas could be picked up on the side of Denial for Shadow Q uh, and that will be a good look for that squad. Shadow Q plays a great Sylvanas and we've seen a lot of the wins that Denial has been able to win eke out on Sylvanas. Bots banned away from DJ Pernicus on the side of Cognitive. Final ban pending for Cognitive here. Uh, probably targeting the mid laner here. Uh, Ice is already removed from the pool. Um, we'll see what they take a look at. No, they'll take the Freya away. So that, that powerful dual lane presence and that magic damage core are going to be uh, taken away from the Nile and Cognitive. They have uh, they have a pick here. Let's see what they'll like to go for. Uh, Denial, Denial will take the Poseidon. Okay, I mean, there's that, the mid lane mages are starting to kind of run out there. Poseidons, Agnes <laughs> of the world, more the, the couple kind of remaining picks. Sure. And Cog here, their final two picks going to be locked in. Uh, going to need a Guardian and, uh, and some kind of jungler Do here. Do we see a Guan Yu, Bart? I mean, in a lot of cognitive doesn't feel like a Pern wins. god to me. I mean, that's that's been his god as of late. I mean, that, that's I know, I know, but it just doesn't feel like that momentum based Pern god. But hey, yeah, you know, I, look at him. I hear, I hear a theme song in the background. <laughs> Athena going to be picked up as well for the side of cognitive, um, and we'll be able to see a great. I mean, Athena has been top pick, top band material in the past, yeah. and here we find her all the way on the bottom of the picks. So it'll be Shibalanke, Athena going into Sylvanas plus one. And it's going to be Cupid. The second Cupid of the day. Wow, okay. The second Cupid of the day. Now, realistically, what Cupid will be able to do... Uh, so, it's a funny. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Just a small one, though. Uh, earlier in the, this year, in this season, uh, Cupid and Shibalaki were virtually the only hunters that we saw. It was a big change, big sweeping change. Mm -hmm. And while uh, a lot of the pro players sort of adjusted, Cupid was a great match for Shibalaki because of the fact that Shibalanki can't dash out of the Cupid ult. Fields of Love will provide a cripple. So right. Rising Jaguar, unable to happen unless beads come out. It's a daughter versus a burster as well, right? Mm -hmm. Cupid very much a burst and teamfight oriented god. Uh, Denial, a lot of, lot of sustain though between the Cupid and the Sylvanas. Going into a oh, yeah. uh, pretty sustained light composition outside of Pern's AoE heal. But of course that's a warrior heal. It's not going to really stack up against that guardian heal too well without a full conviction Passive bonus from Guan Yu. Which these days, not so hard to stack up, to be honest True. with you. Tallow Assault uh, provides stacks of that conviction, so you're able to see a lot more healing output from this Guan Yu. Which yo, is yo, yo, Shadow Q. What Once again, one? going for the hog. Yeah, so Shadow, So we saw Shadow Q play this last week, uh, the Hand of the Gods, which we got to speak to Jeff Hinla in that post-game interview, and he gave us a little bit of his what he thought was insight into that. So the hog will bring early game pressure. Uh Almost undoubtedly, we'll be able to secure the enemy buff, which is what Denial's doing. Yeah, right yeah, they're now. definitely they're definitely going to invade here. I mean, that's why yep. you buy the hog. Um, you know, fun story about the hog. The icon makes no sense. The the icon? Yeah. Why why is it a gold minion face? I mean, it's the face of the gods. No, that's a minion. It's it's the hand of the gods. Not a hand. Not a minion face. Strange. Strange. Uh. Strange life out there. No, no, no. Here it is. Here it is. So the minions are the pawns of the gods. <laughs> it is just an extension of their power, therefore a hand. Well, the real reason that it's that um, goes back a long, long ways in Smite here. As you see, Mace of the Face trying to zone out Kabam. Kabam is going to force him to take some harass to make his way back to the lane. And you it's going to be a long, longer hit. Like, 
The thing here, though, is that Mace the Face is going to be like level 1 versus a level 3 Giannis, and he's going to lose a full wave here. Thor going to try to split a little bit of that and not give up too much, but eesh, that's a, that's a big sacrifice to get your dual lane ahead. Hand of the Gods looks like that because uh, this item was once uh, only capable of killing lane minions. Okay. Um, and, uh, and originally was introduced as an item for, uh, for laning. And uh, yeah, so it was, uh, that's why it's a minion. So there you go. Little, little smite ancient history for you. As we get in our, into our dual lane, a very interesting situation. Like we said, Denial went ahead, invaded onto the side of Cognitive, not just the dual lane buff, but also oh. uh, took out the red buff. And Ooh. because of that, Cognitive's dual lane, only level one. Not able to find any of that farm in the jungle that Denial just took right out from under them. And credit to the hand of the god. Well, there's a meerkat here in the dual lane. Going to have a slap fight between the Osiris and the Sun of Wukong. Shouldn't see too many kills coming this way. Um, kill potential really... Probably more in favor of the Sun Wukong ever so slightly just with the ability to whittle down Osiris, but it's pretty much the same matchup both ways. Judgment Tether is just really, really difficult to confirm against Oxform is pretty much uh, all that's going on. You'll see that interaction right there. Basically, that's exactly right it. it. <laughs> wow. That's why it's hard to confirm. <laughs> Man, I've heard of Caster's Curse, but you got it the other way around. Yeah, it's the, the Caster's Boon. Meerkat, though. Uh, Sikandara. Oh, no. No, that was a kill. He just elects to kind of wait that one out instead of going around the back. Uh, and Meerkat doesn't sniff it out anyway, so they still have the opportunity here. Where is the stun? There it is. Double tap going to come through. Poured in. Spin to win. Not going to be enough Judgment Tether. And that Osiris passive already stacked up. Wait a little bit too long with that one to Sikandara. And now level 4 Thor goes for a failed gank attempt. He'll hit level 5 in the lane, and that'll uh, limit a little bit of his surprise. Here comes Pern out of the jungle as well, forcing out that mule and there's a two-minute away. And uh, things keep on rolling. No first blood. Dual lane again focused here. We'll see how these players stack up because, again, look at this. Level four and level four across the board for the two members of Denial in their lane. Only three, so a level behind here for Cognitive Gaming. Able to really pick up some of that experience that they lost. In so the now what is Shadow Coo going to do with this hog? This is the hardest part of buying the hog is that it doesn't transition to anything really useful for right. the mid lane camps until he gets to rank two, where it'll execute two minions, essentially, 480 true damage there. Mm -hmm. um, so with just the one, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he tries to lane this. I mean... Gold Fury is still what it's looking for. You're yeah, Gold Fury to... later on, the secure there. But, I mean, maybe maybe he'll try to um, go ahead and execute the uh, the big minion in the next wave that comes out, perhaps. It, it's possible. Even without rank 3 Hand of the Gods, though, it is still a powerful tool for confirming Gold Fury kills. Mm -hmm. So you might see some early objective focus from the guys on Denial because of the fact that this Hand of the Gods is on their team. It, it's an interesting pocket strat for the beginning of the game, but I agree with you. How they transition this, whether they look for the, a lot of early Gold Furies or they just... Con uh, continuously go for these buffs. That's really where we want to see Denial. Well, this also, this is hog. the second game we've seen Shadow Q go hog? Or yes. is it the third? Second. Second, yeah. I know it's definitely the second set. I wasn't. I couldn't remember if he got it in both games in that first set that we saw it. Yeah, he had only elected uh, in, in the second game, if I'm not mistaken. This is this is an important buff here for Denial as well. You can see Mesa Face is going to rotate over as well, and the goal here for Denial is just to completely starve out cognitive mm -hmm. of these buffs. Um, but, you know, if they weren't able to secure this somehow, it, it, that hog becomes less and less useful. <laughs> in fact, it wasn't even used. Pern in a bit of trouble, though. Pern in a lot of dead, actually. <laughs> and bye-bye. There goes your first blood. Pern. You saw him. He was actually Talu assaulting the wave, like, way up by the enemy tier one, oh, yeah. and then just really made a bad decision there to be that far out of position, and it's an easy confirmed kill. Once, I mean, once he dashes away and they stun that out, cripple, bye-bye. There was a big push by Denial to put their dual lane ahead, and so Bronx Bombers getting credit for that kill. Yeah. Also, excellent. It's going to work directly into where Denial was trying to work by putting those two characters ahead. Now, you're seeing... It's two levels as far the num as far as the numbers, but as you see, Kabam just leveling up. It's about a level and a half, uh, which still that is a significant lead for two hunters going up against each other. Well, so far so good with that hand of the gods. They'll go back and secure their own purple buff, giving an even larger advantage to the Cupid. Now sitting about 600 gold ahead of Shibalanke, and that'll that'll translate into an extra, let's call it 15 or so stacks, maybe a couple waves worth of minions that he'll be ahead with that transcendence rush over the Shibalanke, who's gone for the the similar item, but also has a a, a beads one. So. Um, it's actually going to be quite a few stacks that Mace, or I'm sorry, Bronx should be ahead and should be able to pressure this lane pretty effectively against Shibalanke. That, that, that should be the, uh, the make or break for this early laning stage. Can Brox Bombers actually convert anything out of this early lead? So this is one of the interesting things. Sylvanas can't help in this regard. Bronx Bomber is able to stack up the minions. So if you sit up ahead and keep basing attack, because the back is stopped on the Shadow Q. Now it's a two-on-one, slowed down by the darts from Kabam Roar. He's not too worried about that. Nope. <laughs> root, root, pull. All right. He actually comes out ahead in that trade, I think, now that Aurora's at 50% HP. And uh, it's a Transcendence Cupid coming back to Link. We take a look at the gold in hand. It's already up. What a player. 
Uh, 90 gold for the Cupid, obviously, but Shibalanke, 500. So still some ways away from that Transcendence. Yeah, it's, it's quite a distance for Shibalanke to start getting his stacks online. Whereas Cupid has already started. Should be a big boon. Two players here in the middle lane for Cognizant. They're just going to clear minions off their tower. Play it safe. Oh, just barely missing that Judgment Tether. There was Meerkat. Couldn't get the slot in time. We'll get a, a, a nice amount of harass out on the Waros, though, but the Cat Stun just trades so well with any kind of aggression. Meerkat? So, so this is the interesting part. Osiris, well, hold that thought. Ooh, that's a long this way away. Could be a kill if he can range confirm and he does this just CC enough. chain. Doesn't matter. They don't even need it. Just enough. Just enough range. I almost thought that wasn't going to make it. The ult. Yeah. It, it could have been close there. Aurora, he'll go through the... Uh, the Giannis portal there, but it'll just be to defend for the moment. Still has that ultimate available to pop his way back over to Shibalanki if things get carry over in the dual lane. Bronx Bomber's still over there. Putting the pressure on, but Kabam holding his own. Only about a level behind, given uh, how effective that start was from Denial. That's uh, d doing a nice job of leeching the experience. So Sun Wukong in this dual lane. We keep mentioning how Osiris is a good matchup. Uh, Sun Wukong can just delete the wave, hit the Jingle Bang, pretty much that's it. Meerkat has to work a little bit more for it, but can do it. Efficient. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know the hard part. I missed. thought it missed. And I was like, no. <laughs> I wish I had the face. I wish we had the caster cast <laughs> like they have on So You Think You Can Cast. Yeah. The face bar just made it the. Uh... They gave him the old Gutex. <laughs> Pog Champ, right? That's Pog the, Champ. That's the emote, yeah. That's uh, actually, <laughs> that is High Res Dan's favorite emote. Oh, man. It's well, actually funny. Pyron can get denied up. and then pulled back through. And Shadow Q, like, oh, actually, why did I do that? <laughs> he runs away <laughs> from Kuan Yu, eating just a little bit of damage out of that Warrior's Will. So Dan asked me the other day, mm -hmm. he said, hey, hey, Tom, how do you do the PogChamp face in Twitch chat? Nice. <laughs> I told well, him you type PogChamp. Dan known for his admin skills, not his critical thinking. <laughs> He's no Cooper, though. <laughs> also, uh, Dan brought PogChamp posters to the concert he went to last weekend. He had, he had PogChamp on a stick at Tomorrow World. So. Wow. PogChamp. That's a that's a thing. Big impact in dance. Yeah, that's a factoring in heavily. It appears. Well, denial enjoying that two kill lead for now through eight minutes. It's a modest lead. Uh, a couple kills translating into just a little over a thousand gold experience. Going to be roughly the same there as well. Sixteen hundred. I'm sorry, uh, nineteen hundred now. You see it kind of fluctuating back and forth as the waves and the camps are stolen away. But that's uh, that's basically what happens when you steal away their uh, their left side camps continually over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean the jungle just has been denied. Huh. Uh, Denial has really taken control of these jungle camps away from Cognitive. I'm going to spend this entire game trying to figure out different ways to say Denial. <laughs> because Denial... That Denial's denying... Denial's camp. game strat here is Denial, and that's not something I want to make a thing of. Well, it's, it's generally been. I mean, we, I mentioned that a little bit in the early stages. I mean, this team has for a long time been characterized by their uh, early game strategy. Uh-huh. Um, going back to the last iteration of Denial. Yeah, going back as far as there really has the teams been together. All the way back to Procore Gaming. Wow. You know who on that team? No. Steven Zappis. Really? Mm-hmm. With Mace in the face? With Mace in the face. That's a throwback. It, it's funny. Denial has, has entered the smite scene two separate times with two separate lineups, both of which featured Mace in the face. Yep. And Shadow Key, right? Uh, Shadow Key. Well, Shadow Key was on dig until he left to go play Denial. Exactly. So, yes and no. Yeah, but. yeah. Good old Procore Gaming. That's where a lot of these players came from. Best, Shadow Q. Uh, all played on that old Zapman team. Oh, wow. Eventually became Curse. So they all, it all starts with Zapman. It all starts with Zapman. Three years later, made another team called Eager. I mean, he could have made it to Worlds, but. But Zapman. <laughs> but Zapman. Yeah. Solo lane check in here. 11 to 12. Leading <laughs> is Solo Kong. Solo lane check in complete. <laughs> They're still fighting each other. <laughs> and uh, not much is happening. Yeah, I mean, really, the breakdown of that lane is just... Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. We're going to have a tower dive. There's Lord of the Afterlight, the Athena Ultimate as well on the top of it. And as I say that, of course, the kill happens in the solo lane. Walrus gets cleaned up. Yeah, a big part of that is just noticing as we see the textbook response to now starting the gold fear. A big part of that is noticing as soon as the Sun Wukong Ultimate is down, he's a, he's here able comes to be first damage here combination. Comes Kraken's going to be used as well, but Juan used Cavalry Charge. We'll take him through it. Taking a ton of damage, though, as Pern. As a result, Gold Fury did go down in favor of Denial. Cog trying to make something out of this. That Giannis ultimate was already used. Mesa Face will clean up Pern. Best will clean up Shadow Q as well and still roaming for more. Meerkat trying to move forward, but he doesn't have the ultimate to close any more distance. And that'll be that. Big rotation out of Meerkat able to make it from all the way from one side of the map to the other. And did he turn, port in? Cognitive. He may have ported in there because he does have teleport one. Uh, yeah, he did. He ported in for that. Yep. Looks so, like he ported in the mid lane. 
So the Gold Fury goes the way of Denial, a Cognitive able to pick up the mid lane tower. Yeah, they take a mid lane tower. That, that's a, that trade actually comes out in favor quite a bit of Cognitive there. Gold Fury not worth her full bounty. Uh, tier 1 tower is static, of course, and the God Kills should translate into quite a large experience advantage now if we take a look at the graphs after that last skirmish. Yep, 1,700 experience. Not actually too much there. Uh, they only made about 400 since last time we checked in. Uh, gold is going to extend just a bit as well, but you can see they've they've nearly totally recouped that Gold Fury. Yeah, you can see that large drop right down the straight line. That's going to be your Gold Fury. And then that swing, half of the Gold Fury was essentially taken back by the kills and the tower. But don't forget, Gold Fury will respawn and be worth more. The tower, that's 500 gold in map presence that, that Denial just can't get back. Yeah, and this, this will slow down Denial's ability to... Um, restrict the cognitive jungle because they don't have that tower to retreat to. So they can't really get as aggressive in going in and trying to deny those camps, especially the red uh, left side red camp here for right. uh, for COG. So, so a little breathing room. Yeah, they, they, they're still definitely numbers-wise monetarily in the lead, uh, but a little bit of that intangible map presence or map pressure taken off by COG. Sylvanas is going to rotate over and look to set up a kill here, but Athena's going to ult in as well. And Meerkat got rooted there, <laughs> luckily. For uh, old Shadow Q, would have taken quite a bit of damage. Meerkat, gonna go ahead and recall. No, no, those are just baits. He's about 70 seconds away from his port coming back up, so probably not gonna try to fall back until he can finish off that mystical mail and port right back in. Four members of Denial roaming on the right side towards mid lane where they're gonna try to catch out DJ Pernicus and Best here. Sikandara looking for it. Fields of Love gonna be popped. He's going on to Best, but he misses, and that, that should be a free escape for the Honest now. Yeah, Threshold gonna slow him down. Threshold's such a good spell against Aggro Thors. Threshold just, it speeds you up, it slows them down. That's exactly what you want when you're trying to avoid the chase. And Sikandara missing the Thorold. Uh, again, this player just joined the team. Shing no longer on the roster, or at least a starter. So Sikandara uh, hasn't played at all during the fall split. That's eight weeks of professional play that he hasn't been a part of. You know, mechanics like that, though, don't necessarily, maybe it's nerves. I don't know what it is, but that's a Thor ult that just missed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> he tried to catch Bess on the other side of the portal and, yeah. and just was off the mark a little bit. <laughs> that was a very near to a max range Thor ultimate as well, so it could have just been that he didn't have the actual distance to get where he knew Bess was going to be and tried to kind of make it up. But if you yeah, look at the other side of that threshold cleanly, it, uh, it probably isn't happening here. Take a look back at our dual lane. That, uh, that early game aggression from Denial continuing to pan out. About 1,100 gold to the credit of Bronx Bombers. That translates into a full set of boots over Shibalanke. So this is a pretty tough lane for Kabam as of now. I mean, he has to stay really, really far back. He's, he's, he's doing what he can here I'm to try to prevent falling too far behind. He spots out the rotation easily. Uh, you can see there's no wards, but just looks in the jungle, and you can see the vision. Uh, the ward actually just taken off by Denial, so an earlier ward was there to spot out the mid lane rotation. Now, though, <laughs> no longer there. It's not clears it out. It's actually interesting. Kabam sees the rotation from the mid lane and looks into the jungle. That's a tell. That tells Denial, there's a ward there, puts out a sentry, takes it out. The next time that rotation comes, Kabam won't be in the know. Kabam showing off that Shibalanke idol. Chillin'. Waiting for the wave. I mean, he can't really even begin to approach it. I mean, if he gets too far forward, he gets hit from the heart bomb. Doesn't matter how far he dashes away, that Cupid dash is going to catch right up to him, and then Fields of Love will follow. So, Cupid dash is actually uh, one of the largest dashes for the Hunters. Narrowly avoiding the ultimate is Kabam. Here comes help out of Athena. The slow is strong and the Cupid ult is down. So there's a taunt into some more damage coming out for Kabam. And that should be it. I mean, smart stuff from Kabam. I mean, basically just waited until he could get an aggressive dash out of Cupid. And then the immediate uh, Athena ultimate came out to secure the kill there. Nicely baited in. Shadow is going to blink forward. He's going to ultimate out onto a few. And in comes Thor as well. But Vess is going to immediately beat that away. And now the Uncivil Vortex is going to do a lot of damage to Sikandara. Clip Shadow Q on the back as well. Pern going to try to hop on the horse. And that will secure a kill onto the Thor. Three for four now total in the game. A two kill swing in favor of Cog. So that's rough. Uh, the beads coming out from Best was for Shadow Q's ultimate. Mm -hmm. And when Sikandar lands on top of Best, his beads are still channeled. They're still working. He still CC immune. So unable to really get the stun. May going to take a lot of damage here as well. Now he'll trade off back towards Shadow Q. He's going to get stunned out by the Judgment Tether here, but I don't think Osiris can continue for forward much more than this. Mystical Males are complete for those solo laners as of now as well. And uh, Cog, they're going to make their way back and uh, start up another Gold Fury here, at least force Denial into a fight off balance as their players respawn. We try to pick uh, the back lines here, it looks like. Shadow Q is going to try to leap away, waiting for the taunt there, and now going to pile in on top of the tree, and he will get a race from the playing field. No Hog available to contest this Gold Fury either, which is a big part of this selection and well that that maybe uh is is 
it, it, you know, it could obviously always still continue to factor in later in this game, but one of the major deficiencies of Sylvanas in the Hand of the Gods meta was that he's just so easy to kill. And when you're relying on Hand of the Gods security objectives, as you were back on his compulsory, um, it's why you saw him kind of come in and out for certain teams. And here, to kind of go for that play on a Sylvanas, knowing that's one of his primary deficiencies, right. hasn't really played out very well for Denial here. And you see it right there. I mean, uh, a little surprised not to see Cognitive go in and just start that Gold Fury and, and, mm -hmm. and just tell Denial to come and try to fight them. Yeah, because largely, I mean, compulsory, really the word here, mm -hmm. blink on Sylvanas is just as compulsory as Hawk used to be on these supports. So you're pretty much locked into these two item choices once you select to go Hog. So you don't have room for what we normally see, the shells, the heavenly agility. Quite a bit of trouble here now is Thor, and that Mjolnir's attunement will not take him out. Best going to go for that point-blank ultimate. Pern's going to pop the uh, the red hair cavalry charge as well, but not get much out of that either. And still Cog showing a reticence to start this gold fury. I'm a little I'm a little confused as to why they don't fill. It must be that they're they're trying to respect this Mace of the Face beside yes, they don't get blown up by the Krakens, but mm -hmm. Mace, you know, you gotta think. Between Mace of the Face and Bronx Bombers, I mean, that's better than a hawk. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, two two very large AoEs, yeah. no no kills on the either of those, just that Sylvanas and or the Thor. Yeah, you you put the fields of love down where the enemy team is is taking on the the gold fury, you have to leash it. Mm -hmm. Or the Kraken comes out of nowhere and steals it away from you. So uh, cognitive not taking any chances by any means. I mean, last week, uh, Gold Fury was, uh, was stolen by a Spirit Flail doing 170 damage. If you can get your timing in there, you can pick up the, these objectives no problem. So Cognitive looking for a larger window before they really commit to these objectives. Cog has nearly uh, completely re recouped Ooh. the early gold advantage from Denial uh, from those invades. Sylvanas, once again, going to be caught out. Not going to die this time. It'll just be enough to secure the camps. But Cognitive not really maybe doing enough here. Do you think? I mean, they're not really getting much done with these kills. And, and a lot of that going to what we were talking about, respecting Mace, his damage output especially, uh, on that side and around those objectives. But you got to find something. It's looking like this one's not going to really go anywhere until we start seeing some Fire Giant fights because Cog is not going to be willing to fight into objectives with several mem members of Denial alive. But Denial has no problem starting it up. Right, but Cog can, can really crush Denial on the counter-initiation at the Gold Fury, and we saw that happen in the last engagement. So... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be, I think, a, a fairly ponderously paced game here as both teams have really a lot of, lot of the right counters to each other. For sure. And right there, just the presence of Cognitive Gaming. may go in here. The, nope. the, the presence alone. Cognitive Gaming showed their face and now said, okay, they have a hog. Grand is rank one. This is the hand of the guy. 180 true damage. <laughs> That's about what a Kraken's going to do at this point. Mm -hmm. Meerkat pulls Gold Fury accidentally with his favorite item, Mystical Mail. <laughs> Oh, right. He's he's the one that really doesn't like Mystical Mail, right? Dare to Care despised Sprint 3. Yeah. Mystical Mail and Meerkat are, like, the next level. Meerkat really hates this item. But it's... It, and, I mean... Not so, enough to not buy it. Talking about it, I mean, it, you, that's the thing. You have to on the Warrior. What, it's it, it drastically changes the game. It allows you to clear the wave so much more. You have this added pressure. And plus, I mean, have you ever looked at the Soul Laner's damage dealt? Yeah, a lot of it's a lot of it's mystical mail, mail. And, it's, and, ma and not to mention mystical mail is magical damage. Mm -hmm. So when you're in that solo lane, largely you're building against your opposition, physical protection. Mm -hmm. Most junglers are going to be physical as well. Mm -hmm. Mystical mail is dealing magical pr magical damage that you're just not building against. So able to really change the dynamic of this lane. Burning away his walrus to the back of his tower here. Likely to go ahead and recall. Yeah, indeed he will. Uh, you know what will he build? Is will he finish off that frostbound hammer with the rune forge done? That extra HP certainly could help in the lane. We'll see what he elects to go for here in just a minute. Any time now. And yeah, it's just going to be another mallet. Okay. So, yeah, into, into the heavy hammer. Complete miss of Shadow King. I'm sorry, in, into uh, maybe a, a Jotun's here? Brawlers, perhaps, for uh, to help handle Guan Yu? Could could be a, lot of a thing as well, although it's a little more aggressive than some of often like to be. Cog, they'll take uh, three swings at the Gold Fury there before Kabam gets a little too scared for that one. And away he goes back to the lane to farm. Farm, farm, farm. That's another definitely war, the motto of this one. Another war taken out by Denial. Uh, they've really put a lot of attention into this area right here. Uh, this ward protecting the enemy purple buff. Denial has cleared that ward three separate times. That being the third here in our first game of two-game set. Eventually, they're going to fight each other. I and mean, we've had a couple skirmishes. We've had that one major engagement at the Gold Fury. But it's been a very farm-oriented game. And, 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 you know, that's that Denial strategy, but... Mm -hmm. Again, I don't see Denial transitioning that into anything meaningful now. They got that early game advantage, and they had the pressure up, but the pressure is all basically all gone now. They haven't really done anything else with that hog. 
Uh, they haven't really gotten much map pressure outside of the early game, and now Cogs recouped that, but Cogs still feeling on their back foot and wanting to farm up here, so... And, and it really, it's in their favor with the Shivalanke. He's going to scale much later in the game than anyone on the side of Denial. So Exactly. You Denial has to make a move here sooner rather than later. I mean, we're 25, or I'm sorry, 21 minutes in now. Spike games go 30 minutes usually, right? You get your Cupid and Sylvanas a head bar. You want to do something around the 15 to 20 minute mark. You know, you, you, if you just wait around, Shivalanke, Giannis, Osiris, all of these gods are going to come out and just wreak havoc on the enemy team as the later, as later, as the game gets later and later into the clock. A lot of pressure, a lot of presence on the left-hand side. Three members have cognitive, four members have denial. Tower falls just from a basic out of the Sylvanas. A lot of damage was dealt earlier on from that initial pressure we were just talking about. So denial able to pick up a tower for their troubles. But all five members are here. Sikandar likely to go up in the sky as soon as everything is ready to go. And just Meerkat from the back side, stunning him by himself. Sikandar throws a hammer but doesn't commit. Just shows up for the purple buff. No, tier one conceded. That's a that's a, a small victory for Denial, and it feels like they've been after that one for a while, and that does open up this Gold Fury play a little bit more for them. They'll be able to stop Cog a bit in the choke here. Uh, wing Wing Blade, I would assume, going to be coming around for Pern at some point in this game. A lot of slows that he's fighting into uh, on that Guan Yu, and he needs that HP as well. You can see uh, Breastwood of Valor coming out as well, definitely uh, respecting the the damage. Yeah, while we're talking about Pern, I, I absolutely love the... Uh, the late bluestone? I love the late bluestone. It's... Oh my okay, god, we go. in. We got plays. Just running around in circles with Mesa Face in the back of this fight. No one fighting him. He's not fighting anyone either. Not going to drop a Kraken just yet. There comes the Whirlpool waiting on it. Still holding, still holding. Meerkat's going to go up to the ultimate. There comes a the Kraken onto Meerkat. Mesa the Face quite low. One more over the wall with the Spirit Flail. Best, he's going to go for it. That's an easy kill for him. No, no, it's Aegis away by Mace. Still shouldn't matter. One more shot. Come on, Best. You haven't been out of the game that long, have you? And uh, it's a one for two trade for now in favor of Cog. Gold Fury going to be looked at as well. Pern traded away for the mid laner. Well, the, the brothers Grabowski going to be pulled off the map there. Bronx Bomber's out of position to contest this. It's just the Thor. Hopefully Cog can spot this one out. It doesn't look like they have ward coverage. Turning the corner now is Bronx Bombers. Can he impact this? Backside is Walrus. That's going to force Kabam out of the fight. That's going to force a reset as well, but it's picked up by Denial. Cupid. No, Cupid's going to let it reset here. They don't want to fight. Why not? I, I thought they would be able to keep Bart. They decide not to. He's chasing down Walrus, his Meerkat, and the rest of his squad. But they would be stunned out. Sloppy. Sloppy play. Thor wall. Yeah, that was very awkward. I mean, I, it, it I seemed like that. I mean, Gold Fury had, like, what, about 2,000 HP, maybe? And it feels like that Bronx Bomber's going to continue to hold that there. And, and the fight was surging forward for Denial. It would have been tight, certainly, and, and you know, could have gotten taken away. But instead, they both will elect to let that one drop. Nicely timed by Walrus to turn the corner there and disrupt Kabam, however. Uh, speaking of uh, of how this one has gone so far, it's been Sikandara and Pern uh, and, and, and trying to set things up for their team, but neither of them really having too great of a game this time around. You can see Sikandara, uh, only one match under his belt so far, the split, neither of which were won by Denial. Pern, old man Pern there. He's got an extra fa Alpha Draft fantasy point over Sikandara. At least there's that. <laughs> Yeah, per Pern's been, uh, both of these players have been in the team for a long time. Uh, Pummy Epi really coming into him, coming into himself sort of, I guess, uh, end of season one, beginning of season mm -hmm. two. Pern's been in for a little bit longer, but ultimately... Uh, and per Pern's, like, not really a player that you necessarily want on a fantasy team. He's not a points exactly. guy. Exactly. A lot of what He Pern is a, uh, I mean, you don't play Guan Yu looking for, you know, 14 kills and one death, right? Yeah, you'll see a circuit come out from, from DJ Pernicus every now and then, but largely... Uh, if you ask somebody on the street, well, if you ask somebody that knows about Smite <laughs> On the Smite point, Street. <laughs> if, if, if you're walking down, you know, Olympus Boulevard, it'll be Kabrakin, Guan Yu. These are the characters that he's really known Right. For. Yeah, which are really more setup gods, uh, frontline tanks. Mm -hmm. He'll he'll die quite a few times in any given game. Primarily around trying to secure kills. Well, the fight's breaking out here. Kraken was used. Didn't find much confirmed damage. Your Pern will go under tower for Shadow Q. Makes the face to fall as well. And once again, the brothers fall to the wrath of Cognitive Gaming, 10-4 to 4 now in 25 minutes, and COG have their first uh, really definable lead of the game Best in, in the form really mostly of experience, about 1,000 gold, but that's going to shoot up to about 3k as this Gold Fury will fall. Trying to disrupt here, Sun will call him Cupid, but this time the uh, the zoning is there for COG, and this will be an e easy secure for them, so their patience does pay off, and they get a uh, relatively uncontested secure on the Gold Fury. They're going to try to force Walrus's ultimate as well, but they don't really have the cripple to deal with it, and that Mesmerize from the Cupid ult is going to hold them in place. No, they do get the ultimate. What? Wow. So that's 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 uh, that's 
a roar. That's all a roar there. I mean, basically, he charges up the dash, yep. and Walrus goes, uh -huh. thinks that the team's behind him, and it's just not. He ults to try to avoid the taunt. Uh, you know, it's the safe play, certainly, but that's right. also a, a big win for Cog as they move into Assault this Tier 2. Yeah, I mean, the Walrus using the ultimate, a Sun Wukong without an ultimate is so much easier. The thought process, it's so much easier to kill him. That's where we saw the kill going on on the right side very early on. And here, forced to ultimate out of the Meerkat. He'll be safe, just for the moment. Oh, Second Thor. up. Uh, he's going to go to the backline for Meerkat here, but they do have the Guan Yu heal, which they can burst away here to kind of uh, prevent that from being too effective. And that Thor wall... Not really on the mark to uh, continue in there, unfortunately. And, and Meerkat just too resilient with that Mystical Mail. I mean, even though it looks like he has a low... Oh, it doesn't look like it. He does have a low percentage HP. That's still quite a bit. Mystical Mail granting a ton of HP as his Runeforge Hammer. So that's he's still sitting on 1,000 HP there, probably. And not just the HP, but the damage reduction. After the ultimate, uh, full passive coming yeah. out for Osiris. That's why he looks so translucent. 16% oh, oh, oh. damage reduction. Not done yet. Shadow Q's going to try the pull. But it's Bronx Bombers who's on the dish here for Pern. He will not find the stun. However, now we'll get stunned in return. Burst damage coming through. He's trying to make his way through the wall. There's a heart bomb. It's going to be Aegis away. The Wisp's going to be there as well. There should be a death for Pern, even with the shell coming out. And an overextension there. Doesn't find that stun on the Cupid. Just a little bit too greedy. Trying to set that aggressive tone for Cog. And now Denial will surge into their jungle. So is the two mana items come out. You have the... Yeah, he's still out of mana in like all these fights though, right? Meerkat finds himself in a ton of trouble. Uh, he eats just about every ultimate on the side of Denial that is available. Mace of the Face still holding his. Walrus uh, has just come back up as well. But uh, Fields of Love going to be enough there to take that kill. Thor Jotun's into Mystical Mail though for Sikandara here. So things starting to look up a bit for him. Pern's way ahead. Holy moly, look at that gold lead. Yeah, per per Pernicus is, is way ahead of 600 gold. Uh, he also has, also, don't forget, Bluestone is 800 gold, so it looks like he's further ahead than he is. Uh, as I'm just looking at Transcendence into Spirit Rift. Oh, uh, ooh, that's a good crack. And Cogs, a roar, and quite a bit of trouble as well after Kabam was instantly erased. A couple in hands going to do it. Nope, it'll be over the top with the cudgel. Trying to pick away on the backside there is best, but uh, being defended effectively is Mace of the Face. Best going to be forced to concede that tier two, and... Seems like every time Cog takes an inch, Denial takes another inch. In the other direction. Inches. inches. It's a game of inches. The game's decided in the trenches. It's, it's a game of inches. Okay. I don't denial. know about this. Okay, so Trying we're not to willing to larger. fight the Gold Fury because it's too scary if they have one or two members up on their team. But Fire Giant, let's go, boys. <laughs> Why not? I mean, it, granted, it is best. Best going to just kind of sit back and try for this big boy snipe. Uh, looks like... Pern will get enough out of that to pull them off the Fire Giant for the moment, but it doesn't reset. 5k HP remaining. Uh, and yeah, best you can see, he's trying to get a position for the Snipe. He'll get stunned, but he'll go through the wall there. What a sick play. Worth noting as well, uh, Fire Giant does oh, have... Oh, oh, oh Unstable Vortex. Can. Not enough. Secured by Denial. But here comes a counter initiation. Shadow Q is going to knock up a few. Pern getting credit for one kill. In comes Sikandara, but doesn't get the secure for now. And Denial will get out with just losing Mace of the Face, who's taken a ton of death so far. Shadow oh, King going to fall as well. And man, the Brothers Grabowski having a tough game this time, both falling multiple times in the last engagements. That's six deaths between the two of them in the last three fights. Chasing still is cognitive. Taunt coming out from Aurora in just a couple of seconds. Any moment now. Any time now, Aurora. from Sikandara. And that'll Obviously. turn Cognitive around. Will they look at this tower? They will. Uh, they do have Walrus coming out from the backside. Jingle Bang over the top on Apernicus. He's got a heal. The tower's down. Yeah, you know, the, the issue here with that Sun Wukong, you know, when he tries to nip away at the back line there, his DPS is like nothing. It's like 10 per second, right? Because it's like he's working on the mystical male proc and, and the odd Jingu Bang here and there, right? If he can't actually get up to a target, there's not much he can do. Uh, he's, really, he's really kind of this weird, like, burster, right? He has great harass, but his real, like, ability to set up kills is all about cat stun burst into Master's Will into Cudgel. It ends up being more damage than you expect, and you get out poked in addition to that. It's a very frustrating god to fight against, but you kind of see there the weakness is that as a, as a disruptor into to multiple targets there, like, the Guan Yu is way more effective at pulling them off the Fire Giant than the Sun Wukong would be. Exactly. And, and you know, talking about why Denai was able to go for the Fire Giant and, and instead, of the, instead of the Gold Fury early on, uh, it, it's a different story. Cognitive, they have the best ultimate, which is very scary when it comes mm -hmm. to stealing stuff. But outside of that, there's really no large burst on the side of Cognitive. And don't forget, the Fire Giant is dealing other abilities. Gold Shear just sits there and, and basically attacks. somebody, yeah. You know, you've got mud puddles to worry about, the, the odd tectonic rift type ability coming out from him, the meatballs that he's throwing. There's a lot that the Fire Giant does to disrupt a steal attempt. So Denial feels a little <laughs> bit more comfortable going for it. Almost, Shadow Q. Almost. <laughs> I almost got to pull that, uh, that port in. Meerkat says, I know all four of you are here. We're not taking that bait. And yeah, here they come. They're going to go ahead and aggress into this Tier 2. And Denial... 
Well, they've got an opportunity. They win a fight here. They uh, they take some phoenixes as well. I like what the best is doing in the jungle. He's staying here. He can port in through the. He can put a portal through the wall at any point in time uh, if his team decides that they want to go ahead and and engage. I guess you know the big issue for me there is that like. Giannis and, and really your mages are such exceptional wave clears that right. to send them off to the jungle there basically guarantees that tier two goes down. They're they're looking to to uh, kind of counter initiate onto Nile if they try to take more than just the tier two there. But it does mean they're conceding it, and I don't know that they necessarily they could have maybe sustained sustained another wave or two, right. bought themselves a bit of time against that fire giant buff. Um, because if you look at it, I mean, they basically have all of their characters need to get into melee range to effectively kill your wave, inclusive of Shupalanke, who has to really get up pretty close to have the darts to be effective against the wave. Gold Fury taken by Denial in that last exchange. Cognitive, totally relinquish it. Don't want anything to do with it. That said, 31 minutes in, even after the Fire Giant and the Gold Fury and a Tier 2 taken, Bart, it's just under 2,000 gold. That's a very, very close back and forth game. 1,500 gold at this point in the game. I mean, it's not tied. Denial have a little bit of a lead, but... It, Cognitive are in this every step of the way. Oh, it's a, you know, like like we said, kind of at the top of the the set here is that this match does factor in really, really important into the later stages of who makes land here. Um, it's mathematically not, but very much appears to be a must-win set for denial here. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they really even a one and one is a loss for them. Yeah, it's, it's not, like you said, not mathematically, but just looking at the rest of the schedule, it's a different story. A Lord Red 3 with the taunt, but not too much follow-up. Yeah, I'll get a couple there, but they're not going to get any kills off of it. Walrus is going to try to make his way out of this fight into that Sun Wukong ultimate. Not going to come back over the top here, even with that Fire Giant buff. It's going to be a full-on retreat from Denial. Thor ultimate, not used. No, it was used. Sick and Dark's ultimate. I mean, it was used, yeah. but not used. Not not used effectively. Oh, okay, yeah. Aurora. Feel himself. Here he goes through the portal. Finds a taunt. Onto just one. It's Walrus, the... Ultimate's going to come out from Shadow Q as well. Fields of Love going to be used, but immediately they're already dotted by those Wisps onto Shadow Q, so they immediately pop out of the Mez. The fight continuing on here. Blue team continuing to search for Cognitive. Slowly finally kills, though. Another brilliant taunt there. They should be able to get at least one out of this. Yes, Uncivil Vortex just too good against those stacked up opponents. Uh, Bronx Bomber's going to get a kill there. It's a two for two trade so far. Guan Yu and Shibalanke down for Thor and Poseidon. Great timing. I love what Cognitive decided to do there, Bart. So they engage just just a couple, yeah. just as the Fire Giant buff falls off of their enemy. And with just a little bit of time for the Fire Giant to respawn, Cognitive go for it. They see the window, they take two off the board. Now, again, it's the if. If Cognitive was able to get five, then easy free Fire Giant, right? That's why the decision was made. Fire Giant falls off the opponent, and Fire Giant going to be spawning soon. Everything lining up for Cognitive. Uh, they wind up trading even, but that was the thought process behind why they went in when they did. You know, we didn't point it out, but Meerkat does go for chin size pretty early on in his build here. Uh, he's actually gone back for that Emerald Talisman, so he's had those for quite some time. I, um, I, I we like haven't seen any real, uh, you know, that really factor in very heavily, though. Like, he hasn't isolated someone and really killed them quickly, unfortunately. I mean, if you take a look at the player damage, Osiris sitting up at number three. I, I absolutely love chin size on Osiris. He gets natural, uh, he, he gets natural damage reduction from his passive plus judgment tether on top of it. You still have to build him uh, defensively, not what I'm saying, but the chin size, it synergizes so well. He's what I call a chainsaw character. Very quick basic attacks coming out. Chin size doesn't care. 0.5 damage, it doesn't matter. It's a flat damage based on the enemy's health. It's it's a great item for Osiris and, and seeing it this early, no problem. Second Darl got encounter ward the fire giant there. You know the next set of aggressions coming over on this side of the map. 34 minutes into this one, and it's uh, anytime you see a game go this late, it gets very, very uh, top heavy and starts mm -hmm. to kind of sway back and forth around that fire giant. Next fire giant probably doesn't decide the game unless it's a full wipe, uh, but the one after that certainly will at this point. So things getting very, very treacherous for both sides of the battlefield here. Denial trying to poke away at Cog in the mid lane here, but turn ca perfectly you. capable of healing up most of the aggression they're able to put out uh, from a safe poke distance and best the rare dodge of the jingo bang all five are here from denial and that was just communicated to these two in the mid lane i don't think they knew initially uh, before the rest of cog showed up to sort of shut this is that really out. not very great positioning from cog they do not no. want to fight in this choke no. granted they do have the athena but that that whirlpool is just going to be really really good at gem stopping isolation. the aggression yeah gem isolation makes that thing like walking through I mean, we Nickelodeon Gak from 1994. Do you have it guts? I want a piece of the aggro bag, man. I, I really do. Yeah. I would. I, would. I bet you can find one on eBay. You probably could. Someone, I'm sure like someone's listed an aggro bucks. track. No, probably like, certainly a thousand, right? 
not like they're making more aggro crag pieces. Yeah, but think about the guy that has the aggro crag piece. Yeah, he's probably trying to sell it. For like 50 bucks in a... <laughs> in a case of PBR? Is that, yes. what's is, that, is that what happens after you're a child star in Nickelodeon? You just live a life where you'll sell your piece of your aggro crag? I don't know. For, ask, for ask, $77 of value? Ask Lindsay Lohan. Was she on Guts? She, she was a child star. Oh. She's on many... She's on... Uh, she was more Disney Channel though, right? I don't know. I... She is from Long Island. Yeah, you know, I wonder if anybody in chat was a contestant on Guts. If if you were a contestant <laughs> on Global Guts, I would not be Global. It would be regular Guts. Okay, regular Guts. Any Guts. <laughs> it wasn't the aggro crag, then it was just the crag. Yeah, exactly. I would I would extend an invite, not out of my own pocket, to Hyrule Studios if you were on Guts. I mean, if you can send me a selfie with you and your piece of the crag, great. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I'll give you a retweet. I'll be yeah, I'll retweet that. In a heartbeat. Team finally oh, wow. Themselves. Bye bye, Bronx Bombers. Bye bye, Mace of the Face. Best gets a couple of real quick kills there wow. on the back of that Giannis Ultimate. Sickandara wants the counter initiation, but it's going to be Harry going in That's there. He'll find the stun into the Shadow Q knockup, but like, there was no damage on the back of all of that CC. Nothing happening. Off the horse comes Pern after getting basically a full channeled ultimate out of that one. And it's three quick and easy kills for Cognitive. They'll turn their attention to the Fire Giant. This one, uh, over-ish, You know what? I liked that second ult. It was perfect, but where was the response? Well, Bronx Bombers and Mace were dead. That's where the response was. In the in the, in the pool. Yeah. I mean, it was like, okay, we, we stunned him with the Thor ultimate and the Sylvanas ultimate, and then we got Walrus Sun Wukong yeah. to use Master's Will and a cudgel. Yeah. And it did 380 damage to all of them. Yeah, the main damage deal is taken off the board. Yeah, tough. Cognitive able to do whatever they want. Fire Giant picked up. I mean, I don't, I don't see denial uh, making their way out of this one, honestly. Like, I, I just, I don't know exactly how they stop this. Best on on firework there. Five hundred dollars. Sure, that was worth it. No global emotes, best. Come on, buddy. So BM. No global emotes, just global guts. <laughs> do you have it? I don't, and I want to find somebody that does. No, well, Cog not going to force the issue here. They're going to go back. No, no, no. This is the smart play. Uh, yeah, it's a smart face. play, but it's not the fun play. <laughs> Mace of the Face is already up. Bronx Bomber's up as well. Shadow Cube just yeah. spawned about four, five, six, seven seconds ago. Uh, smart play. Don't push it. And you'll yeah. see, uh, basically, Cognitive starts stacking up just HP items to try to solve this base. You have the uh, the Silver Talisman and the uh, the Rank 2 Mystical Male. I guess it's going to probably be a mid-Guardian eventually. Yeah. Coming out there, just stacking up protections for their frontliners. A little bit of bonus damage as well for their backliners. A little bit of pen for Pern, so... Yeah, d don't forget. I mean, sure, as we get later and later into this game, gold will matter less and less. But for all of the Cognitive just did, it's a 3,000 gold lead. It, you know, Denial is still commands a lot of respect here in this late game. Uh, almost 40 minutes on the clock. 17 to 10. It's a close match. Uh, and Cognitive really they can't force any issues because as quickly as best just deleted those characters in the middle of our conversation, Mace of the Face can do the exact same thing. Yeah, These although there is three Aegises them. on the side of Cog, so it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to, sorry, to confirm. It'll be tough. Cognitive now. Fire Giant around their waist. It's five members deep. Pushing down this tower. There's the Blink-In from Aurora. And likewise, the Blink out of Shadow Q to avoid the situation. Still pushing down. Looking at the Phoenix, though. Here comes the rest of Cog. Large lead. There's the pull from Shadow Q and walled off. Great play coming out from the Thor, but it's a meerkat. He's a tanky Osiris with built-in protection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he'll be able to tank up that tower for some time that here. Was but Denial does hold for the moment. Turn. He takes Shadow. quite a bit of damage now as he tries to walk through the uh, turbulent waters of Poseidon's Whirlpool. And Cog denied. It's, you know, it's interesting, Bart. Gem of Isolation on Poseidon was an item that a lot of people said, you know, it's just not worth it. Just go for the power. Uh, and then recently, Lazes playing Poseidon. Lazes, I mean, if it was a different player, I apologize. But Lazes has really been the one for me that's brought it to the front line. No, the, I mean, I, you, you have to beat the Whirlpool. The issue here is that, right, it's like Poseidon comes kind of in and out of, of mm -hmm. professional play. And, um, you know, the full damage Poseidon builds are really pup stomp builds, more or less. Um, yeah. The thing is, is that Poseidon's damage is, like, really, 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 really unconfirmed. Like, it's it's not reliable damage at all. So, with that, you know, Gem of Isolation gives you a actual, like, impact on a team fight, right? Like, for realsies. Yeah, I, I agree with you. So, I like, was, I was yeah, no, no, I know, I know. I, I saw, oh, yeah, Perrin, a uh, questionable <laughs> ultimate there, certainly. But, like, Keep going. you know, Gem of Isolation Whirlpool gives you an actual impact on team fights where mm -hmm. 
you're not always going to hit title searches, and you're rarely going to hit Miracle Krakens. Sure. Especially against a team of three Aegises. So oh, yeah. it's it's definitely the right play here, you know, kind of regardless of any meta state. Oh, I, I, I agree um, wholeheartedly. Yeah. I mean, it's Whirlpool is a, there's a cripple component there, but it's it's that weird gravity mechanic that really literally but still, like, But like Snowball Poseidon's probably still, I mean, if this game is, is more one-sided, he doesn't go Gem of Isolation, I think. Sure. Right. Uh, but the, the difference here is you get hit by a Whirlpool, you turn around, you press W. You hit by a Gem of Isolation Whirlpool bar, at this late in the game where mages and your teammates are doing as much damage as they are, you have to beads it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't it, eat it. It becomes virtually hard CC. You absolutely have to beads it. It becomes so problematic. I've always liked the Gem of Isolation build on the Poseidon, and I'm happy to see it rise to prominence. I think it's such, I think it makes such an impact. As you said, there's so many ifs when you're playing Poseidon. There's no if if you get hit by that Whirlpool. It's also a very kind of strange multiplicative uh, um, Ability, right? It, it pulls towards the center in addition to slowing, and then when you add more slow on top of it, um, it does pretty quickly get to the point where you can't actually move in a in like a forward vector because you're just taking too much uh, slow over wow. time. Shadow Q, he will go down before, uh, but not before he gets off his ultimate there. The uh, Shield the Underworld there doing quite a bit of damage back towards Bronx Bombers as he did have a hard bomb out on Osiris. There's a nice crack. No, Meerkat. What an ultimate there. That quick trigger. And then. Psycho Crusher going to be effective at getting him out of Danger's Way. Mace of the Face finds himself quite low, although his moving Aegis will be fairly effective at uh, stalling them out for now. Best, he's not going to hit by any of that Sikandara. Sikandara, just Oof. a little bit too oh. short. Best uh, up. You know, Best has been playing this game at a professional level for about two years, and um, yeah, I mean, Sikandara kind of got styled on. I mean, that was that was a veteran play right there. That was, he didn't face him. Communication no. let her know the Thor was there the whole time. Waited for him to start up a spell, poured it through the wall. Just kited him nicely. Easy peasy. Game number one going to go the way of Cognitive here in 43 minutes. A long and bloody game. Denial's early game strategy effectively making this game about 15 minutes longer. Right? Cog had to really weather the storm there for those early uh, few moments, mm -hmm. early 15 minutes or so. And, and you see the game go about 15 minutes longer than an average game would. Um, ben, don't break from Cog. Well done. Yeah, it, it worked out. I liked what Denial did. They started off the game really strong. We'll take a look at First Blood as well. Uh, and, and I liked what they did. They Denial was just unable to really continue that thought process in play game. Yeah, and, and and like it looked pretty good for Denial here, right? And I think that I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier on around the 20 minute mark is that Denial didn't really get much after the fact, right? Mm -hmm. All they really did was delay the the inevitable, right. it seemed like, in the way that, that mid game went, right? They basically just pushed out the time at which the game would go back to even, about another 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. But they didn't really get a lot of momentum out of it. And I don't know, is it, is it worth the hog well, there? I mean, Sylvanas isn't building into a second actor until pretty late in the game anyway, but... It's interesting, Bart, because last time we saw this strategy come out from Denial, they extended, they had that early game push for about 10 to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. Denial this time around, 15 to 20 minutes, right? Okay. So they, they improved on last time, still unsuccessful, uh, largely because of how dominant cognitive... Well, I'm actually looking at... Um, I, think, I think there is... A, like a, not, It's not very often this is the case, but I think there's an isolated incident in this game that really lost the game. Um, and that is, uh, that's Bronx Bombers getting, like, just eaten up by Kabam, basically. So okay, what happens yeah. is, is that Bronx Bombers thinks he, he gets baited in by Kabam, and he dashes forward and tries to, and throws out the heart bomb, Ooh, yeah. and then the Athena ult comes in and mitigates enough damage, and then he gets cleaned up. After that, there's no more confidence in the lane from Bronx Bombers. He doesn't actually flex on Kabam, doesn't take an early tower, doesn't really get anything out of all of that early farm and early pressure. Right, right, right. It gets back to even, and then they get rolled over because Cupid doesn't scale like Shupalanke does. And it's rare that that's the case. You can say, like, it really all fell apart there. Um, and, and it's not Definitely. really, I think, on the back of a player. It's more just on the back of the strategy from Cognitive there. They just got out thought. It was bait them in, see if you can bait the dash. Yeah. And we're just going to blow him up with Athena, and it was successfully executed, and I think the game really was lost in that moment. Yeah, I mean, that was a huge turnaround point for uh, for that duo lane, and of course, the rest of the game was really carried out by the mid laner. You mentioned it at the end of the game, the best 10-0-8 slash line for this guy. Absolutely unstoppable. This Ooh, game. that's a 50 FP performance as well. If you had him on Alpha Draft this weekend, it's a good weekend to have best. Wow. He is a, a pretty high point-generating player overall as well. And, uh, well, it's, it's, you're going to see a lot of... Uh, Basically, exactly this. <laughs> so, so if you're not going to pick the Sir Kent or the Sun Wukong, well, Sir Kent was banned. If you're not going to pick the Sun Wukong or the Kepri first pick, and you're going to opt for the Giannis, you better do this. Giannis is probably the best god in the game right now, I'd say. Um, some people probably argue Sir Kent, but sure. I think that um, 
Giannis is probably the most valuable pick. That was that was the play you were talking there about. There is, yeah, that one. Yeah, just, just basic. Not even not even looking at Sikandara, just turning right around and able to uh, you know just clean it up. Well, Alpha Draft top performers for this game, 50 points going the way of Bess. Did anyone beat that? No, they didn't. Aurora puts up 40. Kabam just behind him at 36, and then down the line we go 29 and 26 respectively for Meerkat and Pern. You know, this team's so interesting. DJ Pernicus, again, what we talked about. I, th I think Pern had a very positive impact on this game. I think mm -hmm. his ultimates and his heals, most notably, really helped out his team on the bottom. where we, it, It's backwards. We usually see the jugglers up on top, high kills. I mean, mid laners and mid laners, right? Sure. That's a support. Aurora plays support. He's number two, the jungler on the bottom. Of course, these are numbers, and I don't think they really uh, mention the impact. DJ Perkins does a lot of intangibles, but it's just so interesting and tells you sort of the identity of right. this team. Well, it doesn't factor in healing done, doesn't factor in damage mitigated, exactly. doesn't factor in damage taken. You yeah. know, it's uh, it's definitely a very offensive skewed mm -hmm. kind of uh, stat, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah, based yeah. on assist as well, but I mean that's. He was an initiator, very much so this fight. Exactly. Basically, what I'm trying to illustrate is that, like, contrary to what a lot of teams really bring, uh, they're almost backwards. Their their jungler is really set up in support, and sure, Aurora played Athena, but he's still played well. Well. Let's